Hi everyone, it's Alice and today we are gonna do a little book gift guide. I do one of these every year around this time of year because the holidays are coming up and I love books in general but also books as gifts and I thought we would do it a little bit differently than I usually do this year. I've done a couple of videos that are like specific book recs and you guys have like sent in requests for book recommendations and I thought we would just do that but for gifts. I probably don't need to explain it like you know what this is and if you don't you'll catch on but usually for these kinds of videos I do some baking. I'm not gonna do that today because I actually need to wrap a bunch of presents. I have made like an advent calendar for one of my best friends who has had a little bit of a rough year and I thought this would cheer her up but it means I have what feels like a million presents that I need to wrap and I want to get it over to her today so I'm gonna do that and we're gonna as I think you say in English kill two birds with one stone is that what you say we actually have a Norwegian equivalent of this it's Slottoflurensmek which basically means whacking two flies with one whack which feels less aggressive than killing two birds. Whatever. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of your requests for book gift ideas. I actually got a lot more of these than I thought, so we're just gonna get started and I'm gonna do the ones I can before I just, like, before this video ends up being like three hours. I did get a couple that I actually couldn't think of any books for which I'm gonna leave until the end and I'll just mention them and maybe some of you can recommend some books based on those requests because I have only read so many books but all together we have probably read thousands and thousands of books so I'm sure somewhere someone will be able to recommend something so I'll leave that at the end and then I have a couple where I couldn't think of a particular title, but I have some tips for how you can find something suitable for someone like that. Anyways, enough of this very long intro, let's just actually get into this. I do also realize that I actually have like super noisy wrapping paper, which is not the best for filming, but it's so cute that I'm gonna use it anyway. Anyway, let's get into the requests. So first, we have Books for someone who only likes nonfiction about economics, politics, and war. <laughs> so I can't help much with the economics because there is almost nothing on this earth that makes me snore more than economics and also sports. But I do have something for war, I guess. I would recommend The Spy and the Traitor, which is one of my all time favorite nonfiction books. It's so, so good. It's technically like about the cold war and it's like it's a biography about this double agent who worked for the kgb and he became a spy for the english and his whole story is like wild and you get to read a lot about the cold war and the soviet union and it is fantastic i can't really imagine someone who's into these kinds of things not liking that book so i would recommend that and then for politics the only one I can really think of is just Mercy, which is about like social justice and politics and like incarceration and injustice. There's a lot of things in that, but it's just a very, very good book and there are politics in it. So maybe it would be interesting for this person. Secondly, someone wants a book for someone who loves the Middle Ages and detective fiction. Now this is a very interesting combo and I would like to read something of this like combination myself but I haven't yet so I don't have anything that combines the two to recommend but I can recommend books for it separately. For the Middle Ages I would recommend the Crusades trilogy which is like one of my favorite trilogies that I've ever read. I read it like 10 years ago <laughs> so it's been a while but it's really really good. It's one of the few trilogies that my dad has ever finished. He thought it was so good. He's not a huge reader, but he just couldn't stop reading those books. So those are excellent. And then for detective fiction, 
I mean, there's a lot to choose from. My favorite detective ever is Poirot. So if the person hasn't read anything by Poirot, I would recommend that. And then, I've, I mean, I read a lot of mystery and not all of it is like detective fiction. I think my favorite detective fiction is like Nordic Noir. I actually made a whole video recently about like Scandinavian book recommendations. You can check that out if you want something specifically with like detectives, I suppose. But all of those books are quite dark, so just keep that in mind. In case you're not bothered to go like look at that other video, I will put up pictures of some of the books that I mentioned in it here, and you can pick one of those. All of those have detectives in them, and you know, I want to be that annoying person that's like, you can go check out my other video, but I also don't want to talk about these books forever because I've talked about them a lot already. <laughs> I just realized that maybe I should number these as I wrap them. Or should she just pick one randomly every day? I don't know, maybe I'll... This is one of those things where, because this is in this shape, it's like in the shape of a cream, I think that I'm gonna remember what this is an hour's time from now, and I'm not. <laughs> It's one of those things like when you think of a great idea and you're like, I'll remember this, I don't need to write it down, and then you forget. It's one of those things, but I suppose the order doesn't matter that much, so maybe I should make some sort of system. <laughs> Anyways, then we have someone who wants romance for someone who doesn't like romance. This is literally me. So I feel like I can help out a little bit by recommending the few, very few romance books that I have actually liked. I have two main ones. I have like Call Me By Your Name and The Song of Achilles. Both of those are love stories in a lot of ways, but there is also a lot of other stuff going on, which I feel like is what made me like able to enjoy it. But there is also a certain kind of intensity to those books that I just really really liked and there's something about the writing that just really really works for me. It's more... it's very difficult to explain. It's written in a way where it's not cringe. <laughs> it's basically it. Like it's... I... there's something about certain types of romance books that just rub me the wrong way and these are actually like fine by me. They're amazing, actually. And I'm always surprised when I read a romance book and I actually end up loving it, but it's usually down to the writing. I will say you might be able to find better recommendations other places on booktube, though, because romance is a huge genre and there's so much to choose from, and I'm assuming that there's a lot of really good stuff, so I think there are quite a lot of other booktubers who read a lot of romance fiction and I'm sure they have some great recommendations. But it is also difficult to find romance books for people who don't like those kinds of books. <laughs> Next, someone wants a page turner, cozy vibes, feel good kind of book, around 300 pages, little to no romance. For me, nothing is cozier than a cozy mystery. Whenever I read the word cozy in any kind of like book setting, I immediately think of cozy mysteries. So I'm gonna recommend some of my favorites. The first one is of course The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This is one of my favorite cozy mystery series. There are also another two books out in case the person really likes the book. You can get them the rest as well. And I just think it's very, very good. And although there is murder in it, it does have that kind of feel-good vibe to it. It's not too serious, it's just a lot of fun, but it's clever as well. It's not... like it's a good book even though it's lighter. I can also recommend if the person wants something that is just pure entertainment, I would recommend A Meditation on Murder. This is not like a literary masterpiece, if you will, but it's a lot of fun. It's like a locked room detective story. It's set on this island and it's ridiculous. And like the detective just hates island life so much. He's British and he's just, he hates it. But it's very, very entertaining. And I love the team that's in this. And 
it's just a good time and I feel like that those are the best vibes, you know? Now we have more sort of cozy requests. We have books for someone who likes Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries slash Poirot. Now I totally get wanting stuff like this because I love these kinds of stories. I'm not sure if this person is referring to the TV shows or the books though. I think if they only like the TV show or they've only seen the TV show, getting them some of the books could be fun. I think especially for Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries because I think that they made... I don't remember how many episodes there were but I'm pretty sure there are more books than episodes so I think when you read the books you'll get mysteries that you haven't encountered in the show yet. I say yet, but I think they're done making the show. I don't actually know, but there are like 20 books in the series, so there's a lot. If they have already read the books though, or they're not interested in reading the books, or you just want to get them something else, I can recommend The Widows of Malabar Hill, which is the first book in a series set in 1920s India. This is one of my favorite cozy mystery series. It's so, so good. And it follows a female lawyer who investigates like crimes that only she as a woman can investigate, which is really cool. And then I can also recommend Macy Dobbs. I don't know if that's the name of the series or the first book, but it's set in like England in the late 1920s where we also fo follow like a female detective. And I think I only read the first book, but I did really like it. Then we have a very interesting one. It's a book for a fan of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is my favorite request but also the most difficult. So just bear with me. I spent a lot of time thinking about this. Probably too much, but you know, I take these things very seriously. <laughs> As you may know, if you've been around here before, The Secret History is one of my all-time favorite books and it is basically impossible to find something that is similar in both themes and writing. It's like that combination that I have found, like I've never found anything like it, but I can recommend some books if we just like split it up a little bit and it depends, like the recommendation depends on what direction you want to go in. If you want something that is similar thematically, I would recommend If We Were Villains. I read this this year and I really, really enjoyed it. It's one of those books that is also like one of the main dark academia books. So if you're into those kinds of stories, I think you would like this. If you want something that has some of the same themes and some of the same vibe, I would recommend These Violent Delights. This doesn't focus on a friend group. It focuses on two people who are friends and then it evolves into something more, but it has some of the same vibe and like feeling to it and like intensity in like the relationships in the story. You could also go for something that has a similar feel to it and it has like in some ways a similar setting and the fact that it's like a prestigious university, but it is very, very different in a way. It's Ninth House. This is like an urban fantasy, so it's quite different. But one of the things that I think The Secret History and Ninth House have in common is like the darkness to it and the grittiness. And I suppose the main characters have some similar like things in their background, but Ninth House is fantasy, so there's some uh, stuff that is not in The Secret History. The Secret History is very just like literary fiction and Ninth House has some creatures and some magic and it also has secret societies, which is really cool. And I think it's one of those recommendations that I feel like fits, but it won't fit everyone. <laughs> so I'm a little bit like, you have to see who the person is and if they, enjoy like fantasy at all. Lastly, I have a recommendation that is gonna seem like it's coming out of nowhere and it kind of is. If you like the writing in The Secret History, I would recommend a book by another great writer. It's Hamnet, which 
is completely different. It's historical fiction, it's about a family, and it's just very, very different story-wise. But there is something about the writing that... I don't know if I would say that it's similar, but the reason that those books are <laughs> similar to me is that when I read The Secret of History and when I read Hamnet, I got the same feeling when I started the book. Where you start a book and you're reading it and you're just like, oh my god, this writing is perfect. Both of those books gave me that feeling and so I feel like it could work as a recommendation. It is very very difficult to find books that are similar to The Secret History and maybe a good route would just be to take it in a completely different direction. I also just want more people to read Hamnet. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this paper but it has like dancing animals on it and it's so cute. I also actually have these like washi tapes kind of tapes that I should maybe also use. The only issue with this is that they're really difficult to open and I have fake nails on which I love the look of but my god is it difficult to like do things. <laughs> okay so the next one is a book for someone who likes a good memoir. I also love a good memoir and I have several recommendations depending on what kind of themes you think the person might find interesting. The first one that I sometimes forget to recommend as a memoir but it's one of my favorites is The Complete Mouse. This is a graphic novel and it's I suppose in part a history book about the Second World War and the Holocaust but it's at its core a story about a father and his son or rather the son and his father and their relationship and it's so 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 good it's probably my favorite graphic novel and one of my favorite memoirs i also think know my name is a great memoir it has a lot of like feminist themes it's about womanhood but it, I suppose at its core, it's about survival and it can be a little bit of a difficult book to read. So just don't give it to someone that you don't think can handle it and like look into trigger warnings before probably. I also love the book I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, which is, I suppose, a classic at this point. If the person is interested in like any kind of medical stuff, I would recommend This Is Going To Hurt, which is an excellent memoir, and also Unnatural Causes. Both of these books have like some graphic descriptions in them, so just bear that in mind. And then lastly, if you want something that is really, really good and has serious stuff in it, but is it feels lighter because of the humor. I would recommend Born a Crime, which is an excellent, excellent memoir. It's the kind of memoir that will make you laugh, but it will also make you think. Then we've got a huge one, so buckle up. It's books for someone who wants to start reading fantasy or sci-fi. Both of these genres are huge and there's so much within both and I'm also not the most well-read in either genre so I can only really recommend stuff that I have liked. There are also like sub-genres like dystopia where I have read quite a lot but not all people who like science fiction likes dystopia and vice versa so I'm just gonna do my best and just bear with me. <laughs> Let's start with the sci-fi. I do also have a couple that is kind of like both, but we'll just move through them as we go. I have a lot of different stuff and I'm just gonna tell you very like quickly what kind of books they are. We have Flowers for Algernon, which is a very underrated book. It is sci-fi, but it's a light kind of sci-fi and it's like close to literary fiction in a way. It's a very interesting book though and I think even if you don't like sci-fi you could potentially like this one. Red Rising is also a great alternative. This is more like actual like hardcore science fiction. It's like science fiction with a little bit of fantasy to it. There's some dystopian stuff going on and it does have space so it feels very like typical science fiction I would say. It's also the first in a trilogy so if you're into the first one you can read another two books. Then we have The Knife of Never Letting Go which is science fiction, a little bit of dystopia 
I guess quite a lot of dystopia, but it also has a little bit of fantasy to it. I think for someone who's never read these kinds of books, this is a great place to start. It can be a little bit like you don't quite know what's going on, but when you read it, it's written in a way that's very engaging and it like pulls you in right away because of what it's about. And there are like pages where the text is all different and it's a very, very interesting, but also very good book. It is also the first in a trilogy. So if they like the first one, they can read the others as well. Then we have Station Eleven, which I would say is just mostly pure dystopian it's like post-apocalyptic and it's more like i would say it veers more towards like literary fiction dystopian science fiction if that makes sense it's very realistic i would say which you know it just depends on what kind of science fiction you like whether you want it to be realistic or not i like those kinds of books because I just find them more terrifying. <laughs> you could also start with one of the classics like Brave New World. It's like science fiction dystopian, but a little bit philosophical and it's really, really messed up. But I actually think that book is, like if you're gonna go into the dystopian part of the pool, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily start with 1984 because that's a little bit of a heavier book. I think Brave New World is, a good place to start if you've never read any books that are like that. It's really, really messed up. And even I, who had read quite a lot of dystopian fiction before I read that book, I was so sucked into it and just the whole system is mind-blowing. For fantasy, again, there are varying degrees of fantasy. There's like high fantasy, urban fantasy, I guess magical realism is a kind of fantasy. So it just depends on where you want to dive in. My favorite like high fantasy book that I've read is The Name of the Wind. It's amazing. It's so so good. I'm still waiting for the third book which I've been waiting for for what feels like 15 years. It might actually be that long <laughs> and it's a fantastic fantastic like high fantasy book. It's excellent. The Diviners is good if you want to go the more urban fantasy historical fiction route. It's like, it has a kind of magic in it, but it's also, it has like creatures from, I guess, another world or dimension. I don't know how much I want to say, but that's a great book if you like historical fiction and sort of lighter fantasy. It is quite dark though. I can also again recommend Ninth House, which has magic in it. It's like dark academia. Circe is also a kind of fantasy book. It's like a Greek myth retelling, which has a witch in it. And the last one I have on my list is The Bear and the Nightingale, which is again historical fiction. And the fantasy comes in through like fairy tales and folk magic. And I love that book. I think it's really good. But I think with these kinds of books, you just have to like guess at what the person <laughs> wants or you just have to like, I don't know, you can look at other stuff they like and see if you can find some sort of connection somewhere. Sometimes if you're going to start reading stuff like fantasy, maybe going for the very, very heavy stuff is not the way, but for some people that works too. I think the first fantasy book I read was like high fantasy and I really liked it. So there's a lot to choose from and you kind of just have to pick something. I also, speaking of fantasy, had one of my best friends request something for nerds who like fantasy. And I am assuming that she is referring to herself or her partner, which is funny because both of them have read way more fantasy than me. So I got nothing for you, my friend except the ones that I just mentioned. <laughs> Next, someone just writes books to get people into reading, which I think is very interesting. And it's one of those where I don't have a specific book for this because it's honestly, it's just impossible to find something for everyone, I think. And so I have some tips as to how you can find something because you're the one 
who knows the person. There are several ways that you can go about this, but I think the best way is to base your choice in an interest that that person already has. And you can think of things like what kind of movies do they like, what kind of shows do they like, and you can try to find something based on that. You can also think of what kind of podcasts they like listening to. Stuff like that is a good way to go about it. I think you can Google <laughs> things. You can just Google books that are like this show or books that are like this movie. And you can also YouTube. There are so many amazing booktubers who make videos about these kinds of things and you can find a book that way and you can just read the summary and see if it's if you feel like it's similar enough. You can also think of things like, is there a person that this person looks up to that has maybe written a book? Like a memoir can be a good way into reading, I think. I think it might be easier to get into reading when you sort of have some sort of relationship with what the book is about, which is why I think it's good to base it on some sort of interest. There is also the route of like, if, they have a childhood favorite book, you could get them that book and sort of encourage them to reread it and that can be a good way sort of into reading but you can go several routes and you know Google is your friend, booktube is your friend, Instagram <laughs> like book Instagram is a great place to find books and you just kind of have to search a little bit. It is also important though to remember <laughs> that despite all of us here there are people who just don't like reading that's not their way of like enjoying things and that's fine and so if you're gonna like encourage someone to read they might not be into it and that has to be okay. <laughs> the next request is a book for someone who loves macabre slash eerie stories and the first thing I thought of for this was Through the Woods. This is a graphic novel, it's amazing, it's really creepy, and it's perfect for this request. So if the person hasn't read this book, it is a must read. I can also recommend Perfume, which is a very interesting book. I think people who are into these kinds of stories would like this. It veers towards like being disgusting, but in a great way, and it's such a good book. We also have The Strings of Murder, which is an interesting recommendation because it's... I don't know if I would really... Like when you think of eerie and like creepy stories, this isn't necessarily what you would think of, but there is stuff in it that fits that perfectly, but it is also just the kind of book that's a lot of fun and it's a little bit lighter and there's like occult stuff in it and there's a mystery, but the main characters are really fun. And it's it's the kind of book that sort of veers towards the ridiculous, but in a great way. I can also now recommend The Lake of the Dead, which is a Norwegian classic, which I realized has recently, finally, been translated. This came out in like the 30s or 40s and I read it in Norwegian and I don't know what the translation is like but it's set in like the Norwegian forest which for me feels very eerie and has like a creepy thing to it and it's pretty ooh it's just like it really creeped me out that book then someone wants a book for a person who likes sad books now the first thing that I thought of for this is maybe a little bit unconventional, it's Undying, which is a poetry collection. There's something about poetry that just hits me in a kind of way, and I know that not everyone has that with poetry, so you sort of have to see if this is a kind of person who would enjoy poetry. I think this is a good way into poetry, and it is so heartbreaking. It's about the author and his relationship with his wife, who died of cancer, and it's so so sad. <laughs> if you want to go the more like fiction route though, I also think that Where the Crawdads Sing is quite a sad book. It has a lot to it, so there's a lot of other stuff going on as well, but there is a real sadness to what happens to the main character and how she lives. It has like a loneliness to it. And then 
I also remember the book Tin Man is very, very sad. I remember feeling very sad when I finished that book. It's one of those books that's just beautiful, but it will shatter your heart. I also got a request that I really like. It's a book for someone who likes kind of weird books, but not scary ones. And I love a weird book and I don't read a lot of horror, so I feel like I can really help you out with this one. And I have five <laughs> that I can recommend. The first one that I thought of was Lonely Castle in the Mirror, which is a translated book and it's super weird. It's about these people who find a castle by walking through their mirrors in their bedrooms and it's strange and there's like a wolf girl in there and it's yeah it's hard it's always hard with weird books to sort of explain what they are but just trust me it's really weird i also of course have to mention bunny which if you've ever heard anyone talk about this book most likely they will have described it as weird it's about this friend group secret society kind of thing and they're like sort of veers into some magical realism and it's very, very strange. I can also recommend a book that has strange in the title, is Strange Weather in Tokyo, which is completely different than any of these other books. And it's strange in a way <laughs> that is very difficult to describe. It's really calm and quiet and there's a lot of food in it but it has like a weird quality to it that I personally love. Another kind of weird book coming out of Japan is Convenience Store Woman which I suppose is more strange in that the main character is a little different and I think that on the levels of strangeness this is not like the strangest but it's like a little bit weird. And then the last one that I have is Man Tiger, which is a book that not a lot of people have read, I don't think. I've never heard anyone else talk about it, but it's about a boy and a tiger and like a weird connection. And that's all I'm gonna say. I am completely neglecting wrapping these presents, by the way, while I'm talking. <laughs> I've wrapped like five. I forget, like every time I think of these things, I think I'm gonna do both at the same time and I'll do it in half the time. But it always just takes me twice as long. <laughs> so it doesn't really work. I'm not a very good multitasker. And also, like I mentioned, this paper is making a lot of noise. So we're just gonna get through the rest of these requests and I'll just have to wrap everything later. I don't think I actually have that many left so we might be able to get through everything if we just do it a little bit quickly. The next one is what do I get someone who has listened to every true crime podcast under the sun? I think getting them a true crime book could be a good way to go. I think true crime books and true crime podcasts are two very different things and I always feel like books go more in depth so I think that could be interesting. I have a few that I've really liked. I can recommend The Fact of a Body. The only thing with these kinds of books is that if this person is sensitive to any kind of triggers, I would just look up trigger warnings before getting them any books because obviously true crime usually deals with quite heavy stuff, but there are different things in different cases. And I would just like make sure that you don't get them something that will <laughs> set them off. But The Fact of a Body is a really, really good book. In Cold Blood is a classic that I think is very interesting. I think for any true crime fan, that is like a great book to read. I also think Under the Banner of Heaven and Missoula, both of those are written by the same author and they're very in-depth and very interesting. And I don't think that I've they sort of look more at like systematic stuff, like not always like particular cases, but like a system and the problems with a system, which I think is a an interesting way of like reading or having a story about true crime without it actually being just like straight up murder. I also think the memoir, The Sun Does Shine is very interesting. It's kind of like true, crime and also kind of not because it's about a man who ended up on death row when he didn't belong there 
and it's about the case but it's also about him and what that was like for him and that whole system as well. Then I got one that I can sort of recommend something for but also kind of not. It's a book for a man who loves The Walking Dead and Yul Nespa but has read all of them. I'm assuming he's read all of Yul Nespa's books and I can't help you with the zombies unfortunately. I don't know if I've ever read any zombie books except that book The Girl with All the Gifts I guess is about zombies but that's the only one and I also haven't seen The Walking Dead because I am terrified of zombies and I hate them. But I can help you with some like Nordic noir crime detective recommendations. I would recommend Dark Secrets which is an excellent excellent book about a man who's not a detective but he's like a criminal profiler and he's a little troubled. He has a lot of issues but it's very interesting to read about. And then The Ice Beneath Her is also a great, great Nordic Noir book. Both of those are also the first books in series. So if you find like one that this person likes, he has like loads that he can read. Then I got a really cute one. It's something my dad would like. He loves nature and fishing, which I just thought was really sweet. And I'm surprised that I actually have some recommendations for this. The first one is one of my favorite books and I still like when I think of what that book is about I'm still surprised that it's one of my favorite nonfiction books but it's The Feather Thief which is kind of about like fly fishing and like fly tying but it's also about like history and this heist where someone steals these birds and it sounds like a lot but it's so 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 good and surprisingly very very exciting. For fishing though I don't quite know but maybe like the gospel of the eels which is a book about eels but also a book about a son and his father and them like eel fishing together and it's very much about this like mysterious fish that very little is known about like no one has ever seen it reproduce and they don't really know how that works and I think if you like fishing you would like that. <laughs> then I got another one where I don't have a specific book but I feel like the question requires a little bit of a discussion. It's a book for someone who reads a lot. How am I supposed to find something that they haven't read? I have so many feelings about this because any book lover and anyone who likes reading loves getting books. <laughs> like it's the easiest gift in a way but I also understand that it's the hardest when you're wanting to give a book to someone who reads a lot. Like I don't know if you know this but I'm a pretty big reader and I almost never get books as gifts from anyone and I get it but there are ways of finding books and it's also like I feel like it's worth the effort because nothing is better to a book lover than getting a book that someone else has picked out for you. Although I understand that it can be hard and maybe even a little bit intimidating, I think it's worth the effort. It does take a little bit of effort though so you have to be willing to actually do a little bit of work I suppose but I have a couple of tips for you. The first one is maybe the easiest. It's to find a beautiful edition of one of their favorite books. And one of the reasons I think that this is like something that could work for almost any book lover is that even if you're not a book collector and you're the kind of person who keeps a lot of books, most readers want to have like a nice edition of their favorite book. And some people might even like even if they only want one copy, if you find a really beautiful one, they can replace the one that they have. I think that's a really nice way of doing it. And you also, like, it's wonderful to get your favorite book from someone and someone knows <laughs> what your favorite book is. You can also find a book based on their favorite book. So you can find out what their favorite book is and just try to find something similar. Again, you can use Google. You can use YouTube and you can ask in a bookstore. 
If you know what their favorite book is, in all likelihood, even if the bookstore person hasn't read it, if they like know-ish what it's about, usually they'll be able to help you. A lot of bookstore employees do love books and read a lot and they have great recommendations. So use them for everything they're worth. You can also use bookstores in general. Even if you don't know what their favorite book is, you can ask someone for help in a bookstore. I do think in order for that to be successful, you should know a little bit about what they like. It's very difficult like me trying to recommend books right now, it's very difficult if you don't have anything to go on. <laughs> like if you if you don't have anything, what do you recommend? But you can, you know, just, again, TV shows, movies, what kind of stories do they like? And just take something to the bookstore person and try to have them help you and just trust them. And books are, you know, you kind of just have to, try something and give it to them. And even if they don't like it, I tr like, trust me, they will have appreciated the effort. I think one of the reasons it's intimidating to give someone who reads a lot a book is that I think there's a fear of giving them something that they've already read. And I totally get that. Like I've spoken to several people about it and they're like, I'm never getting you a book because in all likelihood you will have read it. That's not necessarily <laughs> true and there are ways to like figure these kinds of things out if they have goodreads or social media you can try to use that and you can go to a bookstore and just get a very very newly released book like i've read a lot but i haven't read every book under the sun <laughs> and so it's not actually that difficult to find something that i haven't read and I think if you steer away from like the best sellers and you find more obscure stuff, in all likelihood the person will not have read it. And if you find something that's just very, very newly released, in all likelihood they will not have gotten it yet. Unless it's like their favorite author or something. But you could just find a random book and try that. <laughs> the last thing you can do is also quite easy. You can just ask the person. I would like to get you a book for Christmas, what do you want? And have them like give you several suggestions if you want it to be a little bit of a surprise and like, or you could just ask for like a general thing. Like if you really don't know, you can ask the person what kinds of books they like. I just think it's like, if you love books, there's something about having someone go somewhere and like try to find a book for you that's really really nice and i think even if you don't completely like hit the mark it's still wonderful and just like use all the resources and use the person you're gonna give the book to and just ask them that was a very long answer to this question but i just there are so many possibilities and there are so many ways of doing this all right i can see that we're nearing the end here second to last Someone wants something short and pretty for someone I don't know super well, which I think is really nice. And there are loads of ways that you can go about this. The first thing that I thought of was like the books that are like winter tales and Nordic tales and Celtic tales. Those kinds of books I think are really nice gifts. I also really like the books that are like a poem for every winter day, a poem for every autumn day. A poem for every day of the year there's like a whole series of those kinds of books that are absolutely beautiful and one of the things that i really like about these kinds of books is that they're pretty to have even if you don't want to read them but they are very easy to read if you actually want to read them and there's a little bit of everything or yeah there's a little bit of everything for everyone in them lastly we have one that i thought was super sweet it's something that will get my boyfriend to sit down and read with me. I just think that's the sweetest thing that I've ever heard. This is the kind of romance that I'm into. Like this is, there's something beautiful about loving to do something and wanting to share it with your partner. And I just think it's very sweet. I think telling him that is like a big part of the gift. Like I love doing this and I want to share it with you. So I think it's important to like get that across and not just get the person a book, if you know what I mean. But I have two books that I thought of. I thought of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which is 
I feel like reading kind of like mystery fiction could be fun because you can try to like figure it out together and discuss what you think is going on and what you think has happened. And I think The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle is really, really good to read together. It is a little bit confusing, but I think if you read it together, you can sort of discuss along the way. And it's like a mystery novel, but it it's very exciting and complicated and very difficult to figure out. And then I also think the book The Appeal could be a good book to read together, which is an epistolary novel. So the whole book is like texts and emails and just like written correspondence. And I think trying to figure out what is going on in that book together could be really, really good. I also think maybe like listening to an audiobook together could be a good way to go about it. I'm not a huge audiobook person, so I don't have that many recommendations for it. But if they don't like sitting down to read, sometimes listening to it is just another way of like reading, I suppose. And maybe that could work better. Now, those were all the recommendations that I had, but like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I did get a few requests where I couldn't think of any books. And this is the part where it would be lovely if you all could help out. And so I'm just going to read them out. And if you have a recommendation, leave it in the comments. We have a book for a girl who likes pirate stories, which I love. I don't think I've ever read a pirate story, which is honestly kind of disappointing. And I also want recommendations. So if you have them, send them our way, I guess. The second one is a book for someone who likes the TV show Succession. I haven't watched that show. I have no idea what it's about. I have heard of it and people have recommended it to me, but I don't know if I'm really that interested in it, but I don't know how to recommend a book based on that. So if anyone does, tell us. We also have a book for someone who enjoys reading about mental health. I haven't read that much about that really that I could think of at least, so I don't know. We also have a book for someone who loves European Christmas markets, which I thought was very interesting and I don't know how to go about that. So if anyone can think of anything, that would be great. And then lastly, it says a gift for someone rather spiritual. I'm assuming they want that gift to be a book because that's what this is. And I can't really help you with that because I'm not the person to go to for that. <laughs> I actually think we managed to get through all of these though. I may have forgotten a couple, but we got through most of them, which I'm very happy with. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. I suspect it's going to be long. So if you made it all the way here, <laughs> hello and thank you. And yeah, I'm gonna go actually do what I was supposed to do in this video, which is wrap all of these presents. And I'm gonna have to like find a way to like systemize this in some sort of comprehensive way. But yeah, I'm gonna do that now, maybe put on a movie. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today. As always, thank you to everyone who asked for a book gift request. It was really fun to do this. I hope you find some great books for your friends and your family and maybe even yourself. And that's going to be it for me today. I'll see you around. Bye.